Hi friends, Mickey Mankis here and welcome to Out the Back Door. Today I'm going to be making lemon curd, but I'm going to can it. So come along and join me. I found these Meyer lemons on sale the other day, so I took advantage of it and I bought quite a few bags. I've already washed them off and everything, and the next step that I'm going to take is I'm going to start zesting these. Okay, for a single recipe, I'm gonna need a half a cup of lemon zest. Being the Meyer lemons are a little bit smaller, it's a good thing that I did get as many as I did. We're also gonna be juicing these and we need one cup of the lemon juice. Now, I'm gonna be doubling the recipe like I generally do because I've already got a request to ship a jar or two of the lemon curd out to my mama out in North Carolina, so, Hi, Mama, I'm working on it. All right, so I'm gonna keep doing this, and when I get done zesting, I'll get to the next step. All right, I've got my one cup of lemon zest. Um, like I said, the recipe calls for one half cup, but being I'm doubling it, I needed one. And the Meyer lemons are a little bit on the smaller size in comparison to um, a regular lemon. And some of you that actually live in the climate where you can grow your own, I'm sure you have large lemons, so it wouldn't take as many, but it calls for one cup of lemon juice. So I'm gonna have to get two cups out of this. If I need more juice than what I'm gonna get from these lemons, I'll zest a couple more and then juice those up so that I get the amount that I need. And it's a little bit harder juicing the lemons when I really don't have a peel on the outside, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna keep working on this until I get two cups of juice and then we'll get to the next step. Well, I was really fortunate. Uh, I had the correct amount of lemons all zested and everything to get two cups of lemon juice. But I did notice, um, I really do like my little juicer but some of the real small parts of seed had gotten through and are in the liquid in my um, juice here. I do not want them in there, so I'm gonna run them through a sieve to catch any of the extra that I don't want. And it's taking a little while for the juice to go through because there's still pulp in there. All right, so the recipe calls for seven egg yolks. So you've gotta separate your eggs and four whole eggs. Being I'm doubling the recipe, I need 14 egg yolks. So I'm gonna have a whole lot of eggs. All right, I've got all my eggs separated. I have my yolks in the one bowl here. And now I'm going to add my four whole eggs to this also. Now we're going to be cooking this over a double boiler. And in this process, it's going to be pasteurizing the eggs and we're also gonna be adding butter. And generally when we say canning, canning rules are you can't can butter, you can't can eggs. Okay, I'm a bit of a rebel. I do can some of those things, but this recipe is actually from, I believe it's in the Ball Blue Book, one of the recent ones saying that you can put the butter and the eggs in this custard because the acid content of the lemons is so high that you don't have to worry about doing any pressure canning or anything. Um, all we're gonna do is hot water bath this. I see I need a bigger bowl. I have one egg to go and I need a bigger bowl. All right, I'll be right back. When I said you're gonna need a double boiler, um, a standard double boiler will work for you, but being I'm doubling the recipe, I have to make shift. I'm gonna use one of my, um, I think it's a five quart, yep, yeah, five quart Dutch ovens. And I'm gonna put a couple of canning rings on the bottom here to hold my bigger bowl up off the bottom because I don't want it sitting directly on there. And I'm gonna put my water in the bottom and I'll start that heating up and everything. But, so right now, this is the bowl that I'm gonna use for the eggs and the sugar. I'm gonna share a little bonus with you here if you'd like to do this. If you bought a lot of lemons like I've done, besides the lemon curd, I'm gonna be doing my own lemon juice and canning that at the same time. That way, whenever a recipe calls for lemon juice, 
I'm not going to run short. I'll have half pint jars down in the pantry and I can just grab one of those and use it. So I do have water in my canner right now. Yes, I've got my pressure canner out, but it's like I didn't want to grab out my huge hot water bath canner. So I've just got that sitting on the top and I've got my tray in the bottom. I put water in it already, but the difference that we're going to do instead of putting our jars right into boiling hot water, we're going to bring our temperature up to about 180 degrees in our canner and we're going to hold it there until we get our jars in. So I'm going to hurry up and juice all these up so I have an idea of how many jars I'm going to need because right now for the curd, I believe I'm going to need anywhere between seven and eight half pint jars. And I'm thinking, hmm, it might be about the same as far as just the lemon juice. So I'll get all my jars ready. I've got my cases of jars back here. They're all cleaned and everything and waiting for me to go. Um, I'm not going to heat them up or anything. Um, because we're going to be raising our temperature up slowly. And that is so that we don't mess around with the egg curdling or anything like that. Once we bring up the heat, we're going to bring it up slowly. All right, I'm going to have to do the same thing on this, probably run it through um, my little fine sieve to get any of the small seeds that are coming out. Once we get to the next step, I'll show you how much sugar we're going to be putting in. Quick little tip about uh, the extra lemon peels here. Um, if you have a disposal, a garbage disposal, sticking these down through there um, really freshen it up. I don't have garbage disposal, but I just thought I'd give that little tip out there. All right, another thing you want to get ready is your butter. You want it cold, and it doesn't have to be frozen, but you do want it cold. You're going to chop these into big chunks, and for the recipe, you're going to need three quarters of a cup. I am putting one and a half cups in because I'm doubling it. And I'm just cutting these into wedges about mm, close to a tablespoon a piece. Okay, so I've got my egg yolks, my whole eggs in here and everything. I'm going to start mixing these up with a whisk a little bit. Okay, now that I've got my eggs mixed up fairly well, we're going to add our sugar and you're going to need two and a half cups of sugar. I'm putting in five, being I'm doubling the recipe. The recipe says that it, super fine sugar works the best. Well, I just use raw cane sugar. So I'm going to dump that in and I'm going to start whisking that. All right, I'm gonna dump my zest in next. And remember, you want a half a cup of zest. I'm putting one cup. All right, now I'm gonna add the lemon juice. And remember, you need one cup. I'm putting in two. Give that a mix. And next, we're gonna add our butter. All right, now I'm gonna set this on my hot water that I've got for the double boiler. And I'm gonna bring up the heat some, not terribly hot, but what I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to bring it up to 170 degrees. I'm gonna be stirring the whole entire time. Once we reach 170 degrees, then I'm gonna take it off the heat and I'm gonna continue whisking it for another five minutes while it cools down and thickens. All right, like I had said earlier, the process that we're doing this is going to actually pasteurize our eggs. And at the same time, if you can see on the back burner, I've got my um, the extra lemon juice and I've got that on a low heat right now just to warm it up. So that way, all of my jars are gonna be approximately the same temperature when I put them into the canner. Okay, I, my candy thermometer had broken on me and I haven't ordered a new one yet. And I've got like a regular digital meat thermometer that I use a lot of times when I'm cooking and whatnot, but 
Okay, I bought this handy dandy little temperature gauge. Let's see what it is right now. It says we're at 74 degrees. So um, I've got quite a ways to go. I'm going to keep stirring it so that I don't have any scrambled eggs. And that's why we want to start the heat low and slowly bring it up so that we aren't cooking the eggs. All right, we're almost at 160 degrees. We need to get to 170, but um, I'll show you a picture from earlier, how it had such a white foam over it for most of the time. And once the temperature started coming up and it is thickening, um, that white foam has gone away. It's cooked down, so. But you may be wondering, what can I use the lemon curd for? Well, some people spread it on toast or scones. Um, some people use it as a filling in cakes. Um, I'm going to be using it. The reason I'm making it is because Mr. Mancus likes turnovers for breakfast. And he's growing a little old of the apple, blueberry, peach, cherry, mango. <laughs> so I told him I would make him lemon ones and he decided that was a good idea. So I'll be using it in there. Um, also, with all those egg whites that I had left over, don't throw them away. I'm gonna be making an angel food cake. Yes, I make my angel food cake from scratch. There's no comparison with a box mix, please. Um, I will be doing a video soon on how to do the angel food cake from scratch so I can use up those egg whites, but Using the lemon curd on there for dessert is good. You can use this in tarts. I mean, possibilities are endless. 163, we've got about seven more degrees to go. All right, my water is at 168 degrees. I'm going to bring the temperature up just a tiny bit because the water in our canner we want at 180 degrees. Okay, this is a little bit time consuming. I've probably been doing this um, on the double boiler for about 20 minutes already, but you wanna make sure that you continually stir this. You're making like a custard right now with the eggs and everything. And like I just, I keep reminding you, we do not wanna scramble and cook the eggs that way. We are pasteurizing them by bringing the heat up slowly. I'm gonna continue stirring this for another five minutes. Um, it did reach 170 degrees, and I have my jars ready to go. I have my lids and everything. So we're at the part of the regular canning. Now, if you don't want to can this, you don't have to. At this point, you're still going to stir it for another five minutes while it's thickening and cooling down, and you can pour it into jars, containers, or whatever, and put it in the refrigerator. You can eat it like that. Normally, it'll last about up to about a month, if you put it in the refrigerator. So that's fine if you want to do that. Um, otherwise, one thing to note, another difference when you're making lemon curd and canning it, shelf life is around six months. Oh, another thought I had when I was giving different suggestions how to use your lemon curd. What about making a lemon meringue pie? <clears throat> that way you can use your lemon curd in there and with that extra egg whites that you have, you can whip it up to make the beautiful uh, peaks on top and everything, you know. That would be good. I suppose Mr. Mancus will want one of those too. <laughs> if I don't mention it, he won't think of it. Okay, I've got a couple more minutes that I've got to be stirring and then I'll start jarring it up. Okay, right now our temperature's down to about 147 degrees. Um, and it is thickening up. Well, one of the reasons I want to keep mixing it really well is to make sure that um, there's zest throughout the whole entire thing because otherwise the zest is kind of settling to the bottom. We're going to leave a half inch head space and I am just going to continue filling the jars. And then when I'm done with the lemon curd, I'm gonna hurry up and dump the um, lemon juice into the jars also. Yes, I'm using metal lids instead of tattlers today because I don't wanna be concerned about getting my tattlers back from anybody. All right, I was just a tiny bit short um, from an eighth jar. 
that's okay i'll save that one i am going to can it but i'll use that right away um for the turnovers and a reminder ball says you do not have to heat these up any longer I wanted to get the um, lids on this quickly before I put the lemon juice in because I didn't want it cooling down and getting any kind of a skin on the top. I put my bands on, fingertip tight. Now see, these are warm, but I can hold them. All right, as long as I've got those done like that, I'm gonna put them into my canner right away and then I'll fill up the um, lemon juice. There is a little bit of pulp in this, so that's why I'm trying to mix it up. I'm going to leave about a half inch head space on these also. This is going to be like um, a lemon juice concentrate because we haven't watered it down or anything. It's just fresh squeezed lemon juice. I'm going to steam can these. I'll give you quick instructions of how to steam can, but I'll also leave a link to um, a video I did on steam canning juice instead of water bath canning and that way I didn't have to use as much water all right now if you're hot water bathing all you have to do is bring your water up to a boil now and once it does come up to a boil then you're gonna start your processing time and you're gonna process for 15 minutes well, what I'm going to do, like I said, is I'm going to steam can it instead of hot water bath canning it. When I steam can, I use my pressure canner and I load it up and everything as though I'm normally going to pressure can. I don't have water all the way to the top. The jars are submerged in. I have a minimal amount in there. Actually, I did have enough when I put the jars in the bottom. They did become submerged but the top ones aren't. I didn't add any more additional water to it. But what I did is I put the cover on like I normally would if I was gonna pressure can and I've turned the heat up now so it'll start building up ahead of steam and everything in there. Now, for those of you that are familiar with pressure canning, you know with the vent pipe, what we do is we wait to see a good head of steam coming out of there and then we'll vent for 10 minutes before we go and we put our weight a regulator that type of thing on there well we're not going to have to do that because once I really get a good head of steam coming out of there that's when I'm going to time my 15 minutes that I normally would with the hot water bath simple you don't have to use as much water you're not putting as much humidity into the air which it's winter time it would be okay right now but still I don't want fogged up windows and everything else so that's what I'm going to be doing here I'm gonna wait for the steam to start coming out of my vent pipe. I'll set my timer for 15 minutes. And then once the 15 minutes is up, I'm gonna turn my heat off and I'm gonna let it sit for five minutes before I take the top off and start taking the jars out. Now just remember, if you don't wanna can it, you don't have to. All you have to do is let the jars cool down a little bit more before you go and put them in the refrigerator and enjoy it. Well, I'm going to be pulling the rest of the jars out. Good morning, friends. Um, I just got done washing all of my jars. I had a total of 10 of the half pint jars of the lemon curd, and I'm excited about that. And then a little bit of a bonus with the concentrated lemon juice that I've canned up in half pint jars. I've got eight of those, so I'm, I'll have my lemon juice whenever I want it for anything. So. If you did enjoy this video, please consider subscribing and give me a thumbs up. And if you have any comments or questions, please leave them below because I really would like to hear from you. So until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless.